I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to give him up. I just thought I did everything in the world. Mrs. Jack Pearden is talking about her husband's death. Last month, he died of cancer. He was 49. The Pearden family became involved with hospice because Jack wanted to die at his home with the people he loved. Hospice is a medieval term, meaning a stopping off point for weary travelers. Fort Sanders is a hospice for those facing death. The butterfly is the symbol of the Fort Sanders hospice program. Just as the caterpillar goes through stages of maturation, so do the terminally ill in hospice. The goals of the program, first and foremost, to relieve pain. Many times a special drink called the Brompton's Mix is used. It relieves pain while keeping the patient alert. To prepare the patient for death, to get the patient talking about his or her situation, to take care of unfinished business, such as a will. If at all possible, to let the patient die in his home with his family. And the irony is this. The vast majority of terminally ill patients want to die in their homes, but the vast majority of their relatives want them to die in the hospital. The idea of hospice originated in England about 15 years ago. Since then, it is catching on very fast in this country, a country that does not talk about death very much. Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is recognized throughout the world as the authority on care for the terminally ill. The most important thing is that you listen to them and hear their needs, that they can talk about it with somebody and that we stop playing games. Nancy Kerr directs the Fort Sanders program. She is on call at all times, a liaison between the patient, family, and hospital. Her medical training helps patients who are at home, but many times she just lends a shoulder to cry on. You become a definite part of each family that you work with. And uh, I have frequent, frequently been asked, well, don't you get emotionally involved? Of course you do. But we try to aim for and uh, hope that each and every one will come to what we call a good death, where they are tranquil and accepting, not joyous or euphoric, but they, they become accepting. Now she has 15 patients, 10 are already home. How did hospice help the Pearden family? Jack Pearden's wife, Bernice. Oh, I tell you, without it, I don't, I don't think I'd ever brought him home because uh, I was scared anyway when I did bring him. But with Nancy Kerr in there with us every day, and there's nights that I would just love to put my shoes on and start walking and, you know, just keep going because I, I figured I was going to lose him anyway. But then I thought, no, that, wouldn't, that wasn't the answer that I needed to be... You know, I did. I stayed with him day and night for four and a half months. The Pearden's minister, Reverend Leonard Markham, and it has given to uh, Jack a certain uh, uh, dignity in his death, that uh, he wasn't uh, in some closed off unit somewhere and isolated from his family and friends. And uh, when he died, there was a whole room of his friends and family who were right here. While hospice helped the Pearden family to accept Jack's death, it will still be a long time before all is well. Jack Pearden's sister, Mary. Well, as Bernice said, through that, we could bring Jack home. That was the only way. If it wasn't for that, we couldn't have done anything. Tomorrow, we'll talk with a woman who's dying of cancer and see her views on death and hospice. Uh, about all this. A place to cure the sick, 
But when there is no more a hospital can do, the hospice program believes the terminally ill patient has a right to die with the family in the home. Mary Sue Rader is now at home to stay with her sister in South Knoxville. Her sister's two children are also helping to keep her company. Peggy Loveday is glad her sister got to come home. Well, I'm going to be real proud because I want her to come home with me and be happy for the rest of her time. Do what she wants to do and feel free. What was your reaction when you first found out about the seriousness of your sister's illness? Well, I just felt it's unfair. I mean, she'd been through so much, and I just felt it was unfair for her to have to go through this. But God, I mean, he's the one that's going to help. He's the one that's going to do it. And he's going to help both of us. I feel like Sue. I feel that they think that cancer is something to be, like, you shouldn't even mention it, but you should.